This is Bazaar Morning Call. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios in Mumbai. Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. It's a Friday morning. We are coming to you live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios. Promises to be an interesting day, if not anything else. I'm Prashant. With me, my colleague Sonia and Nigel. Guys, I'm running. Hi, good morning, Prashant. Good morning, Nigel. Morning. And uh, once again, thank God it's Friday. <laughs> we also have a lot of data coming through. There's the RBI policy, there's the US jobs report. So, plenty on our hands. Well, and what a good event we had yesterday as yes. well. Plenty of takeaways, and we'll get some snippets uh, all through the day. No, oh, absolutely. You know, for markets, uh, one just, I was hoping that we'll get a steadier kind of a path, right? But there's something along the way. This time it's US, which is starting to look a little uh, unsure of itself. So I think that's the problem, right? Uh, and uh, it's not proved to be a big problem if you look at what the price action for the last couple of days has been, because whenever you've woken up with bad global queues, you've got a gap up and then the gap up has been bought. That's the, that's the history. I mean, you don't, you don't have to look far back. Just look at the last uh, four trading sessions now. But uh, let's just begin where we need to, which is uh, yesterday, right? So the Nifty swung both ways. You had a nice uh, start, <clears throat> which was higher. There was a sell-off. The low was made at around 11 o'clock. Uh, the low was 22,300. And from there, there was a 200-point recovery. We left off at 22,514. The high, of course, was 22,600 plus. So at one point from the lows, the Nifty had bounced 300 plus points. Uh, but in any case, it was a good close, a third of a percent higher, not as good as it was at one point. Now, two important data points uh, this, uh, today. One is the RBI policy. We'll get the uh, sort of action by 11 o'clock, should be clear. And the second, which is, of course, we'll have to wait till U.S. market opening time, is the U.S. jobs data. So one is very uh, important locally. But I think the bigger uh, thing is, uh, of course, the U.S. jobs number. Because, you know, markets have been trying to price what the uh, Fed is going to do, not do, and so many comments uh, from various Fed officials. Overnight price action is on, on equities and stocks in the U.S. is uh, on, on the red side. So Nasdaq is down 1.4, S&P is down 1.2, and the Dow was down about 1.3% as well. So it's red. And by the way, this is a late sell-off. S&P, by the way, sold off 100 points from the highs in the last one hour, hour of trade. So we closed the lows of the day because of that last one-hour pullback. The 10-year was flat. We were at about 4.31. It did move up a little bit, but then cooled off. Oil prices is the big problem this morning. We are now knocking not at 90, but almost $91 a barrel, right? And uh, this is, for a large oil importer, it's a problem. Uh, now, you know, what happens from here? And by the way, a lot of it is driven by geopolitical reasons. Uh, Iran in the mix now. So we'll have to watch this, but I think this is the big negative this uh, morning. Now, uh, Fed's, uh, uh, you know, another Fed speaker, this is uh, uh, Kashkari, who basically floated the possibility of no rate cuts this year. You know, someone called FOMC the Federal Open Mouth Committee, right? I mean, the guys can't stop speaking. So many comments over the last two weeks now. Fed Chair Powell himself has spoken th thrice off, twice actually after the Fed uh, meeting. And of course, uh, uh, many others uh, weighing in as well. So uh, this, of course, was basically uh, premised, this comment was premised to the fact that inflation growth, etc., is strong. So it's possible that we don't need to do anything immediately this year. Uh, now, uh, you know, rates is, of course, in the, in the mix, in the focus, and RBI's rate action, consensus sees no, no change. There are a couple of other issues, you know, that forex derivative thing, RBI action on the banking, uh, on, on various entities like IFL, JM Finance. I mean, today will be the first opportunity for the press to ask governor questions with regards to all of this stuff. Uh, just to circle back to levels, Nifty, I mean, if you're looking very simplistically, must not break yesterday's low. We'll get a lower start. I mean, the last I checked, 60 or 70 points lower on the Nifty, give Nifty indication. But the 22,300 level should not break uh, on the way down, which is yesterday's low. The upside target, <clears throat> as and when we kind of get past uh, 22,526 in a convincing way once again, uh, is 20, I mean, it's 22,800 or so. So high levels, I think, are coming it's just that it's getting inter interceded, interspersed because of what's happening on the global front. Bank Nifty, again, the level to keep above is 47,500, roughly. That's a 40 hourly average. And a decisive close above the recent high, which is 48,161, can lead to a retest of all time high, which is 48,636. If you're trading, if, you don't, don't, if you're not already in and don't have to react to uh, you know, all of this because of what you already own, uh, and you're looking to take fresh positions in the very near term, I would say. I mean, just let this session pass because you've got 
very two big market moving events, the RBI, which perhaps may not throw up very many surprises, but then later in the US, you've got that jobs report, which will come through as well. 80 points lower on the gift 15. Sorry. Absolutely. You know, I think uh, while the near term may be a bit volatile, right, uh, the slightly medium term is still very, very strong. If yeah. you just uh, sort of uh, step back and take a bird's eye view, this has been an out and out bull market with a buy on dips at every level. The Nifty is still very strong at that 22,500 mark. So despite everything and all the cues that we've had, it's rock solid over there. Um, yesterday, just talking, you know, Nigel was mentioning the event yesterday. Very interesting thing that Ramde Agarwal said, where he said that, you know, there were 40 million DMAT accounts earlier, in the, three years ago. Now we are at 150 million DMAT accounts and we are headed for 300 million DMAT accounts in the next three to four years. So that's the kind of optimism that this uh, you know, market is seeing and the kind of influx of money that is coming into India. Well, today, of course, the RBI policy and the US jobs report is something that people will watch for very closely. More than what the policy says, uh, uh, more than the rate move, it's really the tone of the RBI that will be uh, watched very closely and the US jobs report as well. Yesterday, though, both foreign and domestic investors sold in the cash market, so keep an eye out on that. FIIs, I think, have been selling for four consecutive sessions, and DIS, for the first time in 10 days, have sold a bit. Crude is also on the boil above $90 a barrel, so that's something to worry about. A uh, couple of stocks in focus. HDFC Bank will definitely be in focus. The ADR ended 5% up overnight. So on the MSCI changes, you will see HDFC Bank in focus today. And Bajaj Finance, is, you know, the, the numbers were quite good, were very stable for FY24. The assets under management went up almost 34% at 3.3 lakh crores. Uh, so keep an eye out on the NBFCs. But I think the overarching point is that the buy on dips is something that does continue. Of course, in the very near term, there could be some volatility. Well, uh, that's right. You know, Sonia, I'm taking a, a, a quote from what Nilesh Shah said yesterday. There's a God above, right? We believe that. And, and the he's God, Indian. Huh? And the God's <laughs> Indian, right? So we have some challenges, actually, to kickstart uh, trade. Uh, but uh, hopefully, like we've seen in the past, those challenges, they've moved past. So a few challenges we want to list up uh, on the screen. One is the RBI policy. Hopefully, there's nothing hawkish about it. So that's uh, the first point. The second point is later this evening, we get the U.S. jobs report. So that's going to be an important point because suddenly economic data is looking quite good. The jobs report as well could be better than expected, which will be a bit of a worry. So let's see how that goes. And crude oil prices, you know, the geopolitical tensions are back on the table. And that's why you've seen crude at around that $91 per barrel mark. HDFC Bank yesterday as well, you know, the intraday dip got buy, bought into. But technically, you know, it's not uh, bracing for an MSCI weight increase, which is a bit of a problem. It could go either which ways, but the outcome of that is something that we'll know in the coming weeks. What did the FIs do yesterday? Well, ahead of a big event, they unwound their positions, both on the long as well as the short side. They continue to remain net short with close to 57% of their positioning on the short side. Well, moving uh, to uh, uh, moving to the bounces that we've seen on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, every day, whenever you've seen a bit of a bounce, buying that bounce has worked. And today as well, the gift nifty suggesting that maybe you pull back a little bit. So we'll, let's see whether or not that gets bought to do. But that's worked. So you'll have to stick to that. Look at the options data, the 22,500 put. Well, that was very active in yesterday's trading session. You had a big surge in terms of open interest, close to around 20 lakh shares getting added out there. And the premium's roughly around 100 rupees. So the options data suggests that the 22,400 mark will be important. But the 22,400 to around 22,200 mark, that's going to be important. 22,200 because the 20 DMA is out there. 22,300 because that's yesterday's low. And 22,400 because of the options data. You know, so that's why this band is a very, very important zone you're looking at. HDFC Bank, that's going to start off in the green. And remember yesterday, you know, the ADR overnight was, high, was much higher. I think the positive start you get is around 2 to around 3%. Yesterday as well, the stock moved up. It needs to build on to those gains because that's what's going to take the Nifty Bank to uh, fresh all-time highs. And to give you a weightage, 11% on the Nifty, 29% on the Nifty Bank. So that's going to be the driving force. It's going to start off in the green, but how it moves from there is going to be ra rather important. And on the Nifty Bank, the 20 DM is the first reference point and the all-time highs come up for you on the screen as well. The stock that I'm looking at today, since banks, financials are going to be in focus, is Bandhan Bank. You know, the numbers look quite good. The operational update that came in there, you could, uh, you know, quibble about it, but it was more good than bad. So I'll keep an eye on that stock. And yes, you saw massive open interest build up. So there was some long addition that we saw, 10%. So I'll keep an eye on that stock. It's been an underperform otherwise, but this operational update looks good. And technically as well, things looked up yesterday. So that's the stock I'm looking at. Okay, thanks a lot, Nigel, for that. Well, let's begin the show, right? We have Lawrence Belanco of CLSA who says that in March, several momentum leadership markets 
sectors such as AI tech, Japan, uh, Taiwan and India experienced a decrease in upside momentum leading to higher volatility and choppy ranging action. However, he says, there has been a new surge in momentum within the commodities market offering another opportunity for market rotation. Lawrence adds one potential risk to this rotation trade is a rapid increase above the 4.3 to 4.36% resistance zone in the US 10-year yield. On India, Lawrence says both the Nifty and the NSE mid-cap indices have managed to recapture their respective 50 DMAs and are now testing their Q1 2024 highs post-early March sell-off. Despite this rebound, he says the Nifty's daily momentum indicator is still lagging, leaving a price momentum divergence in place. Okay, some money market views now. This is Lakshman and B of Federal Bank who says that the US 10-year is hovering around 4-month highs. Oil is at 5-month highs with gold at all-time highs weighed on the rupee. Now, the rupee, of course, is closing at a record low. He says the silver lining for the rupee is, of course, robust FBI inflows of around $10 billion this calendar year along with highest ever forex reserves of $643 billion. Uh, that's with the RBI. Thus, he expects the USD INR to trade in a range of 83.2 to 83.7 to the dollar in the next few trading sessions. And on the bonds, Lakshmanan says the government bond deals were inching higher throughout last week, largely tracking uncertain global cues. He says monetary easing by the US Fed may get delayed as the US economy is still going strong. He adds that crude hovering near $90 a barrel Due to geopolitical reasons, poses inflationary risks. Domestically, he says, with the status quo expected, the markets will now focus on RBI's commentary on inflation and liquidity management at its policy meeting. Lakshmanan says coming sessions could see the 10-year benchmark bond deals trade in a range of 7.05 to 7.15%.